Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about endometrial cancer. Endometrial cancer is a malignant growth of the endometrium, which is the inner lining of the uterus, that usually sheds in a normal menstruation. It is the most frequently occurring malignant growth of the female genital tract. There are several different types of endometrial cancer, which can be divided into two major groups. The first group is the estrogen-dependent type, also called type 1. This cancer develops from hyperplastic endometrial tissue. It is a highly differentiated type, so the prognosis is generally better than in a poorly differentiated type. The second group is the estrogen independent type, also called type 2. This cancer develops from atrophic endometrial tissue. It is a poorly differentiated type, so generally with a worse prognosis. This type makes up around 10 to 15 percent of endometrial carcinomas while the first group makes up around 75 to 80 percent. Both of these types are histologically resembling an adenocarcinoma, so they are of glandular origin. Rarely, also serous and clear cell adenocarcinomas can be seen, as well as squamous cell carcinomas and sarcomas. The growth of the tumor can also be divided into two different types. It can either grow endophytically or exophytically. Endophytic growth means that the tumor growth is directed into the structure of the organ. So in this case, the cancer grows into the tissue of the uterus towards the myometrium. In an exophytic growth, the cancer grows towards the cavity of the uterus. There are many different risk factors that promote the development of an endometrial carcinoma. The factors can be divided into endogenous and exogenous risk factors. Endogenous risk factors include obesity, diabetes mellitus, having an early menarche and late menopause, so the onset of the first menstruation before the age of 10 years and an onset of menopause later than the average, so around 50, as well as a low parity, so having had few pregnancies and polycystic ovarian syndrome. Exogenous risk factors include estrogen replacement therapy, tamoxifen therapy, which is used for the treatment of breast cancer, and a previous radiation therapy. In the next point, I would like to talk about the symptoms. The major symptom is bleeding outside of a normal menstruation or during menopause, where there should not occur any menstruation. Every bleeding during menopause should be investigated further to eliminate endometrial cancer. One of the complications that has to be kept in mind is if the tumor involves the cervix, is that the cervix might be occluded and that can make it difficult or impossible for blood that is shed during the menstruation to flow out. So hematometra and possibly myometra can occur. Hematometra is if the uterus fills partially or totally with blood. Pyometra is if this blood becomes infected and pus is formed. For the diagnosis, there are a few investigations recommended. First of all, it has to be checked if a bleeding comes from the uterus or maybe from another structure in the genital tract. This can be done via a speculum examination. Also, a transvaginal sonography is recommended to have a closer look at the endometrium and to check for changes in the lucency and conformation of the endometrium. It is also possible to do a partial abrasion, 
where endometrial tissue is essentially scraped off with an instrument for histologic examination and investigation. In unclear cases, it is possible to obtain an MRI with contrast media. In case of a confirmed endometrial cancer, there are two main concepts of treatment. The first one is to do an operative therapy, which is followed by radiation. The other option is to use radiation as a therapy alone. This is generally only used for patients who are not compatible with the, with the performance of a surgery. The surgery is usually a hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo-ophorectomy, so the uterus is removed together with the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. In cases when the cervix or vagina are included, as well in the tumor growth, the upper one-third of the vagina is removed as well. In some cases, also lymph nodes have to be resected. Endometrial cancers are staged by the TNM classification. The stages depend on the depth of tissue that the tumor involves. A stage 1 cancer is confined to the body of the uterus. A stage 2 cancer infiltrates the cervix of the uterus. A stage 3 cancer is as well infiltrating neighboring organs of the uterus. A stage 4 cancer goes beyond the small pelvis in different organs as the urinary bladder or the intestines. In the next part I would like to talk about endometrial sarcomas a little bit more specifically. An endometrial sarcoma is developing from a leiomyoma or from the myometrium primarily. Its growth is usually independent from hormones. And if you want to know more about leiomyomas, you can check out our video on uterine myomas. Uterine sarcomas are often asymptomatic. However, they can also lead to irregularities in menstruation as menorrhagia which isn't especially heavy menstruation. It can also lead to bleeding in postmenopausal women, in which a bleeding should always be checked on by a gynecologist. Another sign for developing uterine sarcoma is a quickly enlarging uterus. Unfortunately, uterine sarcomas are often quickly metastasizing via the hematogenous way. In the next point, I would like to talk about a the therapy. In a surgical therapy, usually the uterus, as well as the fallopian tubes and ovaries are removed. In some cases, also the regional lymph nodes. The extent of the surgery depends on the stage of the cancer. In women who have the wish to have further children, the surgery can be attempted to be fertility sparing at least in early stages. In stage 1, the ovaries can remain, while in further advanced cancers, a radical therapy sometimes has to be considered anyways. After a successful therapy, it is important to still do checkups on the patient regularly and for several years, as around 50% of patients who receive therapy for a stage 1 sarcoma will experience a relapse of the cancer. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much.